Hello everybody, welcome back to Course Design HQ and welcome back to our Sightline series here. We have episode 2 today, um, learning how to frame a tee shot, a um, couple of tips to talk about framing. Um, framing is a, it's a little bit of a hard, it's hard to explain a bit. A lot of it is, is preference, what you like to do with frame shots, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna provide some of my own tips and show some examples. Um, good examples and bad, bad examples uh, to try to help you improve your framing and overall or improve your overall sight line. So let's go. So what we're, what are we going to be talking about in today's video? Um, we're going to be looking at some quick tips to frame shots, what objects to use to frame shots. Um, we're also going to be talking about sun angles and shadows pretty briefly. Um, pretty pretty simple those. Uh, a lot of people can you know, might not might not think about sun angles and shadows when they're framing and when they're creating their sight lines, but we're gonna talk about that too. Um, and we're gonna look at some bad examples of framing. We're also gonna look at some good examples, but uh, I have a couple bad examples that uh, I think are done very poorly, and a lot of designers can look at their own course and see if they're making those mistakes and um, try to improve them. Okay, here we go. What can you use to frame shots? anything <laughs> so framing it's framing shots to me is like centering your the, the the focus in on one thing by surrounding it with, with multiple other things right you can use bunkers you can use i don't know i have a list here actually uh bushes are great for creating humps on the ground to move your attention towards your target um i have a couple examples of that coming up where you can use humps of grass you know, in bottom corners of your of your tee shot to, to move your attention back towards the middle and really give it that nice um, framed look. Um, trees are good to fill in the sides and overhanging branches can be used to come in from the top corners. Uh, you'll see this a lot sort of on, I see a lot of parkland courses. I see Mad F do it a lot where you'll be hitting through the trees and up in the top corners you'll see the branches overhanging kind of sucking you down the fairway, sucking you into that view. Um, really cool idea for framing. Uh, like I said, bunkers can be used for framing, and I talked about that a little bit in the last video. How bunkers can add depth to your hole, how they can add a color contrast to the hole. Um, and then we'll talk about bunkers later in this video too. Now, also we have roads and houses, I guess, can be lined up to direct the golfer down the fairway. You know, you see like, sort of like St. Andrews, you know, 18, has, it has houses kind of down the right side, or townhouses down the right side usually that's not used that much but i have seen it been used on a couple courses um I'm trying to think there was a course i think it was axel's latest course for rookie contest the first hole is like right down a road so you know it's pretty cool it's not used often but you, you can use it to frame holes i guess um so i just wanted to include that you know what i mean um also like I said, sun coming in from the sides. Uh, we're going to talk about the sun angle stuff, how to frame holes with uh, the sun using sun angles um, and get the best look out of your shot. So here's a couple examples here. Um, top right we have, I forget, I think it's called the Daigo's Golf Club. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. Um, that's by Matt F, right? Um, as you can see here, he's used his tree line or it's not a complete tree line, but you see how it kind of sucks you down that, that view. You see how it's used the trees in the top corners to kind of narrow your interest down towards the hole. He's also used the bunkers. You see there's a bunker behind the green and below the green. That's also like protecting the corners of the green and it's adding that depth to the hole, you know, showing you, you know, where the green is, where the danger is. Um, not hard to do at all. You know, you could have a, have a small part in front of the green, larger or higher part in the back of the green, um, and it really adds for a cool sight line leading you down to the green. Um, tee boxes, I don't really think tee boxes come too much into framing, but if you have a straight line of tee boxes, it's kind of boring. Um, so I like how he's, he's had a little bit of interest with the tee boxes. They're not in a straight line, a little off to the side, um, adds a little bit of interest there. The one at the bottom here, the bottom left, is Strathlorn by B101, obviously one of the best courses in the game. 
this is hole four, three or four, I believe. I think it's four. Um, and you'll see what he's done here with the tree line and, um, and with the grass hills, right? He's used the tree line to show you that this hole is doglegging left a bit. I think it doglegs left. It's not really a dogleg, but it moves left a bit. Um, you know, the hills on the right show you that, you know, everything's going to want to come back to the right a bit. I mean, and even though it's a blind tee shot, he still created a cool sight line showing this kind of invisible path leading up to the to the fairway with with these little grass hills and stuff like that. So I thought that was pretty cool, along with the 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 tree line moving you down the fairway as well. Okay, here's something that I invented. No, I didn't invent I invented like the word of this, so um you know, a lot of um Established designers probably look at this and be like, you, you don't know what you're talking about. But this is just stuff I use for um, my types courses, or my courses, and my sight lines on my courses. <laughs> um, so what I, this is what I call framing the corners, and that sounds super weird, but in my opinion, the best way to frame a shot is to frame the corners of the shot. So you think about it like like. Think about a painting. You know, sometimes they'll have like, a, like they'll frame it like in a rectangle, like a picture. But in the top, like the corners, they have like a little like kind of triangle thing. That's kind of what I was thinking when I was when I was making this. I was thinking, and I was I was using it with course designing and stuff. And there's a couple of examples I found where I think they're kind of similar in a way, where you can frame different corners of different shots of different parts of your shot. You don't have to frame all the corners. You frame a couple of them, it really gives a nice clean look. So another here's something I want to say. You can frame the landing zone or the entire shot or both. So what I mean by this, right? Framing the landing zone, you can frame a green with bunkers, right? So this green is is framed as you can see behind the, the writing right here. This green is framed with bunkers, right? It's not the whole shot is not framed with the bunkers. The landing zone is, right? So you can you can um, you can frame landing zones on your green on your fairways. You know what I mean to give that 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 cool depth to the hole and show the danger and show where the golfer needs to hit, as well as adding some you know a nice view to the hole, giving it a clean look. Also, what you can do is obviously you want to frame the entire shot, right? You want some overhanging trees. Obviously, the tree line's kind of moving down the hole here. There's a tree in the top right over here. It's not the best example I could pull up, but it works okay. Um, here in the bottom corner, you see the grass coming in from the left, you know, really framing up the whole shot. And then, all, uh, of course, he has the, the mountains in the background just adding to the scenery, you know what I mean? So, this is not completely true, but I wrote it down anyway. Don't focus on framing the sides. Sidelines are all about depth and variety. What I mean by this is, like, you have a straight fairway, and you just put two bunkers on either side of the fairway that's not framing it very well. So you can definitely put two bunkers on the side of the fairway, but create some interest. You know, if you have a straightaway hole and you just have two circular bunkers on either side of the fairway, that's that like like that's not framing the hole. That's boring. You know what I mean? Make one further up, make one closer, you know? Move one further in the fairway, maybe have the fairway turn a bit, so you know the bunkers are, are face a different angle. You know what I mean, but don't don't um don't pull a Jerry Shields on us and do something ridiculous like that. <laughs> I came across that when I was doing a playthrough of Storm King. Um, and I, that's, that's what made me write this. Uh, he had two humongous bunkers on either side of the fairway. There was a five yard like gap to run the ball through on the fairway. And I was like, I don't know what you were trying to do, but this looks completely ugly. Um, <laughs> think about trees and sun angles in the top corners, right? So... Trees usually be in the top corners. I don't know why a tree would be in the bottom corner unless you have the smallest tree in the world. But usually overhanging trees. You don't have to line like this will usually be just in front of the tee box. So like it shouldn't affect the shot or anything. You should just be able to see it kind of peeking in from the top corner, if you know what I mean. Um, and sun angles. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But the sun usually you don't want the sun right behind the hole. You usually want one of the top corners coming in for your best look. And obviously you can't do that on every hole. Some holes going to have to be like, like, like against, not against the sun, like with the sun. So the sun will be at your back. So you can't always, always, always accomplish that. But if you're going for a center par three and you have the sun 
like coming into your face make sure it's off to the, to the top right top left you know what I mean I think it looks the best that way um, bushes clumps of grass in the bottom corners like I just showed you with that um, the picture of Strathlorn uh, Ben used the the grass in the hills in the, in the bottom kind of corners and up kind of up the sides a bit they can move up into the top corners depending on how like much of a dunes course it is or how much of a hilly course it is um, you know start in the bottom really move your attention down the fairway move it towards where your target is and it doesn't just have to be your target move it towards anything you want do you want a, a, an alternate landing zone somewhere do you want to highlight something else in the in the sight line you know you can just really be creative with it so here's a Here's a decent example of this that I found um, off tdctours.com. So I, I needed to find one. I couldn't find the best one because this wasn't exact like sight line, but it should do. It should be fine. So obviously, if you're playing off this tee, what's going to be in your view, right? In your bottom right and left corners, you have your grass kind of like clumps kind of leading up, showing you that straight ahead is is where you want to go obviously it's par three but still cool now the landing zone they've only framed kind of one corner of the landing zone here which is still cool because this is this is kind of like a, a flatter like like sort of green there's nothing behind the green i don't think you know, there's there's it's not like we're going up to keep going up behind the green it's just like kind of a probably rolls off the back so they framed the kind of the left side left corner of the landing zone up here with these two bunkers as well as the top left which the sun is kind of peeking in from the top left now this is a bit it's a bit kind of behind the hole a bit but it's not directly behind the hole and it really gives a uh, some cool shadows coming back back at the golfer and stuff so maybe what i would have done maybe had the sun a little bit more to the left but it could just be the angle we're looking from Obviously, I didn't take this picture. Someone else did. So, they thought it was cool. Then, you know, that, that's cool. But, yeah, I, I would have probably moved the, uh, the sun a little bit more to the left. Um, in the top right corner, you see they do have, like, a bush kind of thing. It kind of frames a whole bit. Not really. But, you know, usually you put a, little, a couple little trees on the right side, left side. You know, bring your attention back to the hole. That could always help. Now we're going to talk about framing shots with bunkers, and uh, we have a picture right here from Lost Preserve by Golf Wolf UK. Um, think about putting bunkers above and below your landing zones. Let the bunkers flow with the land. So you see what he's done here. He's he's shown he's shown where the, the landing zones are, right? So I'm, this is not a complete sightline because we're not from the tee, but you, you see how he's he's used his bunkers at an angle a bit, showing that you, know, you want to try to challenge this this part over on the right. Um, the left side is the safer side there, you know, and you can see it over the bunkers, but you can also see the depth of the bunkers too. It also, it, it just allows you to see the, the depth of the hole as well. Um, up by the green, you see the, you see the bunkers, it's the same thing. You can try to carry it up to the green, which is sitting up a bit, you know what I mean? And the bunkers are that danger there. Um, so yeah, I think it's a really, really good example here. Um, you know, framing with bunkers can be... It can be done in multiple ways. I mean, I'm probably not the best to tell you how to frame with bunkers. There's probably many tutorials out there because I'm not the greatest designer ever. But you know, that's all. That's 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 the, this is a couple things that I have to say, um, and for what I think about the bunkers and the framing. Um, just like I said in the last video, use bunkers to create depth to the sight line. I think I just said that. So. You can obviously see the depth in this. You can obviously see how they sculpted the bunkers up, but you can still see past them. You can see the green. And also, you can look, they've used the grass hills again on the sides, moving you back towards the hole and framing your shot pretty nicely. Um, this hole is also down, like you're looking with the sun. The sun's at your back here. And they've actually still been able to make a pretty cool hole. So, always remember that the sun doesn't always have to be in your face to create a cool hole. Um, and that's why you can use bunkers to help create that interest, create that the, the stunning views on like when the sun's at your back on those sorts of holes. Um, use bunkers to frame corners of landing zones. Just placing bunkers on either side of the fairway does not always look great. I already said this. Um, like I said, the Jerry Shields hole at Storm King where he sticks two bunkers on either side of the fairway. 
that is boring. That is ridiculous. It looks ridiculous. Um, you know, used to frame the corners. If you look up here, he has some bunkers on the left corner of the green. If you took a square right there and put that, put a square around that green, in the bottom left corner, you see those bunkers? That'll be the bottom left kind of framing it. Top right is this hill up here, creating a really cool um, sight line into the green. Um, you can also do that with like tee shots and stuff, which is mainly what we're focusing on. But, you know, framing can, a lot of framing things that are, are framing techniques that are used with like greens and framing approach shots can be used framing tee shots at fairways too. All right, so now we're going to talk about some sun angle, um, so some quick sun angle tips and um, some a uh, couple tips I have. Here we go. Uh, don't put sun directly behind the hole. Tap it off to one side. I already talked about this a bit. Um, you know, having it right behind the hole, it just kind of blinds the golfer. You know, you don't you, you get a dramatic kind of feel, but you can't really see anything. Off to the side, you get a like you get a you get a dramatic feel, and you can also still see the hole and still see the undulations. Like here, you can see the undulations on the left. The shadows of the bunkers really gives depth to the bunkers and stuff like that. Um, so it's 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 something that newer designers, you know, may not think about when placing their their sun angle. So they think it looks bright and you know, you know, dramatic and stuff like that. But it's something you really want to pay attention to. Um, don't put trees in the way of the sun angle. Let light come through. This is kind of a personal preference. Like, if you if you want to put trees, you know, shadows on the green. I mean, if you want, if I'm making a stunner par three, I want as much sun on the green as I can. So I've got to be pretty like, pretty like, strategic with where I put my um. Where I gotta I gotta stay pretty minimal where I put where I put my my trees right so. On my latest, on my rookie contest course, I had a couple of those where I had to I had to watch out for the trees because there were a lot of trees on, the, on on that course, you know. And some holes had to have shade on them and shadows, but you know, I I had some I had I think it was 16 was kind of my center part three. Now I made sure I didn't want any any sort of um, any sort of shadows in the green, so I had to maneuver the trees certain ways to make sure they weren't in the way. So just think about that. Uh, when you're putting your sun angles in and, and when you're putting your trees in too. Um, finally, watch your brightness. Like I said, when the when the sun is right at the very bottom, like at the ocean, right in your face, you know, you 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 can get a little too dramatic with lighting. I think you know what I mean. I I don't really go into where it gets like really really orange. You know, like lighting right here is pretty good, but. If it goes a lot further than that, you know what I mean? It's, it's going to get a bit ridiculous. And I would just say, you know, watch that. Especially if you have, like, a haze on. You know, you put the haze on and, the like, the weather. You have, like, a going, I don't know, like, 1.0 on haze or something like that. Like, you're not going to be able to see anything. You know what I mean? It will take away from your sight line. Even though it looks misty and foggy and cool, it, it's going to take away from the, from the sight line and how you framed your shot, too. Um, think about... Just you know, if if you don't know what to do, just just you know, don't put your don't put your sun all the way to as dramatic as, dramatic as you can. Just you know, keep it like this one. You know what I mean? It's dramatic, but it's not ridiculous. You know what I mean? Um, I would also say you want your sun probably in the upper right or left corner to help frame like stunner part threes. That's where you get like your best uh, results with sun. Obviously, every part three you can't do that, but you know, pick and choose wisely. So now we're going to look at some bad examples, and we're going to look at some... Well, actually, we're going to look at two bad examples. Um, the first one is the Lynx Stonecliff by me. Um, and the second one is by Storm King by You Know Who. And, yeah, we're going to look at them, and I'm going to tell you what I think is bad about them and um, what they need to improve on. Alright, so, we're going to start with the Storm King. So, this sight line... It's not the worst sight line, but it's pretty bad. So obviously the 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 tee boxes don't help, but they're big massive blobs right in front of the tee. Um, it also doesn't help that we can't see anything on the green. Um, the bunker is barely sticking up, and there's just a tree on the left and some trees on the right, with the green in the middle. There's no sun, 
no clouds, nothing. There's a little bit of framing in the corner on the top right, but that's probably an accident because Jerry Shields doesn't really know what he's doing when it comes to framing. And, you know, it's the retaining wall is sticking up. We can't see anything. There's a big bare spot behind the green. It's just overall really boring. Um, not great. You know, sun angle is really boring. Um, and overall, just not a very good sideline to look at. Especially for, a, for, this looks like it should be a center par 3, but definitely not. Um, the next one is the Links of Stonecliff, hole 7. Um, this is built by me a long time ago. I have gone with the dramatic lighting. The clouds in the sky look pretty cool, but there is no framing whatsoever done here. Like, this is the flattest shot you're ever going to get on one of my courses. You can barely see a bunker out there. There's barely any sculpting done to it. It's like 20 yards wide. And, yeah, it looks ridiculous. Obviously, you can see I tried to frame it on the right with rocks, but, you know, you can't make 40-foot tall rocks. And, you know, the you can see a little bit of ocean on the left, but not enough to really frame the shot. And nothing just really sticking out here, you know what I mean? It doesn't even look like there's a way to get to the fairway without going through the grass. So, you yeah, know, that's, that's a bit weird and... No, overall, just another really bad sight line. But I'm happy I'm not creating sight lines like that anymore. <laughs> okay, so we're going to look at some good examples now. Um, the first one we're going to look at is uh, Sattler Heads uh, Blue by Heisenberg, hole 10. And the second one uh, is Cape Canary by Sindrev, hole number 6. So we're going to go over those right now. Okay, so here we are looking at Sattler Heads Blue um, by Heisenberg, and this is a really cool sightline here. I really love um, how clean it is, but how natural it looks as well. So we're going to look at a couple of the points I want to make here. So framing the corners, obviously, um, up here in this top corner is where that uh, overhanging tree is kind of coming in. You also have the sun coming in from that angle. The the, the sun the sun angle is over in that a corner coming in on the sight line. It's not blinding. It, it just adds to the sight line. It makes the colors pop and everything. Um, kind of this corner over here, kind of the bottom corner, I'd say, um, you have sort of a, a big kind of, kind of a, a, a brushy kind of hill, grass hill kind of thing. Same thing over here as well. Um, leading your eye kind of down the hole. Um, let me erase this real quick. If we look at the landing zone here, we'll notice in the bottom corner we have that bunker. And we also, in this corner over here, we have a sort of another kind of grass, so kind of leading us down the hill there, right? Showing you that the safe option is on the right, the bunker's on the left. Maybe it, maybe you can carry over that bunker. Um, at, like in the middle here, kind of, it has that kind of backdrop. You know, not really framing anything, but still a pretty cool backdrop. And the sun is coming in from the top corner up here as well. Really adding to the sight line and um, shows why this this uh, this hole is framed really nicely. You can obviously see some vegetation up here. Like, some, you have a couple more bushes up here. You know, keeping it a little taller maybe. Um, also have a tree kind of up here on the, on the right side kind of poking in. Um, leading your eye down the hole and framing it really nicely. Okay, so this is hole six at Cape Canary by Sindrev, and this is a really cool hole. Um, it plays great, but also the sightline is amazing, and the framing is amazing on this hole. Um, Cape Canary is probably one of my favorite courses in the game. Like, it's just, it's just stunning, really, um, the way the designers made this. So, we're gonna look at what makes this uh, this framing so good. Um, couple of different things to say so obviously in your kind of top corners here you're framing that in with the trees up in the top corners down below you have some rocks coming in over here over here you have some stairs not not really not much on the on the bottom right but you don't have to frame all the corners if you know what I mean um, if we look in right here at our at our uh, landing zone obviously the the left corner bottom left Framed with bunkers, bottom right is also framed with a bunker, and top right is where that tree is overhanging, all pushing your attention to show that the green is moving right to left. Bunkers guarding the left side, and a bunker guarding the right side as well. 
a um, couple of additional things to say. You have the sun coming in from the right. It's not directly behind the hole. It's not blinding you. It adds to the sight line, makes the colors pop, just like with um, with Heisenberg's. Um, you know, you have the ocean in the back, a little like shelter right here, a bridge. You can see the land is kind of moving to the left a bit, you know, going down to the ocean. It's just, this is a really good sight line and a really good example to look, to, look for if you're trying to improve your framing. So we have come to the end of the video here. Um, I just want to say thanks for watching. Um, I hope you're enjoying this series. Uh, I'm sorry for such a big long delay between the first episode and the second episode. Uh, creating this whole presentation actually takes a, quite a long time, getting all the information down and getting all the pictures. Um, but it's a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, you know, thank you guys so much for, for watching these videos and subscribing. We're almost at 75 subscribers. Uh, that would be really, really cool to reach 75 and hopefully get to 100 someday. Um, so yeah, feel free to slap a like in the video and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. It always helps the channel. Um, next episode, we're going to be focusing on sightline variety, kind of just like how do you create variety of the sightlines, not make every sightline look the same and not get stuck on like one idea. Um, maybe hopefully make that one a bit of a quicker video. Um, these last two videos have been pretty long and I don't want them to be that long, you know, because I get kind of boring probably, but... <laughs> Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.